Yo, 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 welcome back to the Further Your Lifestyle podcast, conversations on lifestyle, passions, and hustles. My name's Chris Furlong. I am your host, and I'm super excited to be back here having the conversation with you. Episode 102 today, and we're talking about accountability and responsibility and breaking it down around three different areas. That is, start taking ownership, stop blaming others, and continue to create the life that you want. Focusing on that stop, start, continue mentality, and we're going to dive straight into it, so buckle up. So I recently, uh, I finished reading uh, the book from David Goggins, his recent book, uh, Never Finished. Now, I wrapped that up at the end of 2022, and in there, there's some real clear statements around where he talks about that we are responsible for our lives and that we need to be accountable in making sure what we want happens, right? No one else is going to do that for you. I mean, you can tell everyone what you want and the dreams and aspirations. People might be able to give you opportunities give you some access to things or whatever it may be. But the reality is it all comes down to you. You are responsible and accountable for it. We cannot go about blaming others, especially in situations where we could have been the ones to take control. Now, I understand that there's things outside of our control and it might have occurred from someone else. You know, if someone walked up to you and punched you in the face, you know, and it was just out of context, you did nothing. Maybe they just mistook you for the wrong person. You couldn't have controlled that, right? I'm talking about things where, you know, if you're going for a run and, you know, you need to have water with you on the go and you didn't fill it up or you're responsible for the water for the team running and, uh, you know, they've all got their water, but you didn't understand that there was going to be less amount of water stations on the running track. Therefore, you didn't plan ahead. You were responsible for that. You were accountable for that. Everyone else might have more water, but if you didn't plan for yourself, that's on you. Don't blame them. And if they run out of water, that's not their fault that you don't have any water because they planned ahead, right? So those are the different things that I'm talking about, right? And I also understand that we cannot know everything. We, we, (laughs) you know, we, we can't plan for everything, but what we can do is we can know what we are responsible for and accountable for, and that is ourselves, right? So in this episode, that's what I really, really want to dive into. And it's probably going to be through a bit of a pep talk of sorts, really just focusing on making sure that we understand the simple facts of getting from now to where we want to be, you know, those destinations and what it really comes down to. And it comes down to those three points, as I said before, taking ownership, removing the blame and continuing to show up and make it happen. So the first one being taking ownership. Now, what does this actually even mean? It gets thrown around, especially in the corporate world, you know, who's doing this, who owns this? I want you to own this. Can you can you finish this for me? la di da da But the reality is, People have different understandings of what that really means. But when we're talking about in the mindset of our own world, it really comes down to know what you control, knowing what you have the power to regulate, meaning that you can change the way it's directing. So for instance, I have the ability to fill up this cup or not. So if I want to have an iced coffee, if I want to have some creamy soda, if I want to have some water, if I want to have something a little bit stronger, I'm responsible for that. You know, I'm in power of that. I have ownership of that. I can control what I put in and what I don't. That's on me. So accepting the responsibility for your outcomes that are in your control as well. So if I put certain things in this mug, if, if you're watching this, I'm holding up a, a mug. But <laughs> if you're listening, I mean, I'm also holding up a mug if you can't see it. But essentially what I put in here and what I consume, I then need to be responsible for the outcomes of that, right? So whether it's a sore stomach or maybe it's... um. Maybe the coffee wasn't strong enough, so I don't feel as awake, or maybe it was something I shouldn't be having, right? And, uh, you know, then I go do something stupid because I'm a bit delirious. The idea is that we need to be responsible and accountable for the outcomes that we decided to do. You know, I spoke about in an episode not that long ago that taking no action is a decision, and we need to be responsible and accountable to that result because that's the decision we decided to make. So the other part of taking, um, the other part about taking ownership is it can also enable us to make better decisions going forward. And that's what ownership means is because what we do now, whether it's right or wrong in terms of we get the result that we want, it's going to now further us to enable us to actually make a better decision when that pops up again, because we now have the better information. We've gone through that experience. It also can help you increase your self-esteem and your self-worth. If you know what you want and you know where you're going and you know what it's going to take, you can start to then pull some levers and say, no, this is within my control. This is within my bounds to be able to make it happen. Therefore, it can give you a big bunch of confidence. We don't want to have pride as such, you know, thinking, look at me, guys, I've got this all figured out, but it could give you the motivation that you need. 
And at the same time, it also can enable us to step outside of our comfort zones and grow. And that's what we want. So with that in mind, what does actually, you know, having or taking ownership, what does it enable? And it's a lot of kind of what I just said before, but when I was reading through this and creating this episode, I was, you know, putting down a bunch of different dot points of my own and, you know, what's really, really been relevant for me. But I think the first one is, well, what does it enable? It enables accountability actions and outcomes. Now, one thing that I like to do is, you know, obviously I share on here, but, you know, when I document my small business journey on my YouTube, which is my reselling business, you know, a lot of those videos that I do, they're just as much basically pep talks to myself, sharing about whatever the topic may be out to the open. But a lot of the time it's to myself and it's keeping me accountable and making me understand what are the actions and what are the outcomes that need to be happening. So it enables me to move forward. It gives me motivation. But what else does ownership enable? It enables better relationship. Why? Is because you need to interact with people to get to where you want to be. You can't just go through thinking that you can get everything covered. If you want to own something, if you want to create the life that you want, you need to interact with people. You'll have to have tough conversations. You'll you'll have to have easy conversations. A lot of time, these conversations are nowhere near as bad as we think they are, but they're a bit scary leading up to them. And that's the reality the reality of it. You need to be able to have conversations with people, build these relationships because you're not going to get very, very far just doing everything yourself. You can get very far, but you won't be able to get to your absolute max unless you start to be able to broaden your horizons in those relationships. The other thing that enables ownership is clear direction. When you own something, you can see where you want to take it, right? You know, I I know that I want to take my business to a certain level. I have ownership of that because I am in control of it. Of course, I also have to do the work that comes with it. So it can give you that sense of clear direction. But of course, along the way, things can change and you might have to adjust change and different opportunities come up, which means the direction may change as well. So how do we do this better? How do we make taking ownership or having ownership easier? How do we make it so it's simple? And I'm not saying that this will be easy, but it can make it easier. Don't get those too muddled up. But the first thing is have a vision. Have an understanding of where you want to be. And I like to call this my North Star. Where do I want to be in one year from now, two years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now? It doesn't have to be that extreme. It can be a bit smaller. Where do I want to be three months from now, six months from now, one year from now, two years from now? Bring it down a little bit. But having a vision, I think, is going to enable us to have better ownership because we know what we need to do to get to where we want to be. Now, sometimes it means we might not get what we want but it means we're still working towards it. So having that vision gives us that ambition and that push to make it happen. At the same time, having the clear goals and the milestones, it really helps with that as well. But I think also remembering to stop and reflect. And you can follow the same process of when you reflect, what do I need to stop doing? What do I need to start doing? And what do I need to continue doing? That works really, really well for me. But also building a positive influence. This is a very common topic across so many conversations that I have with you guys is having people around you that's going to enable you And that's how you can take better ownership. Why? It's because now you've got people that you can rely on. You can say, okay, I'm going to delegate to you. You still own it, but you're giving some of the responsibility to someone else. You're still accountable to it, but you've got ownership of it, right? But you're giving it to someone else to help you get ahead. You know, when we hire someone in a job, you know, if you're having a business and you hire someone to now take control of things, you still own that but you're giving them ownership of that as a responsibility. You still need to be accountable to it, but it enables you to then, again, get to where you want to be. Or it might just be having people of like-minded mentalities, enabling you to think in a different way of what you own, and it makes it a little bit easier. And some of the most logical ones that will make ownership being a lot easier is, I'm going to say it, I've said it before, is focusing on what we can control. When we only focus on what we can control, when we take ownership of something, it starts to make the the focus a bit more isolated. We know what we need to be doing. We can pinpoint what we need to be doing and we don't get you know distracted or fluffed up by all these things happening outside of our control. We can't do anything about them. And three other ones is celebrating the small wins along the way enables us to feel accomplished as we take on the ownership role, but also evaluating the progress. Yes, we need to celebrate the small wins. We need to self-reflect and think about what can I stop, start and continue, but also evaluate on it on a regular basis. Is things working? Is this working? And that's how you can then probably start to um, apply the stop, start and continue mentality. And the third point there, the final third point is ask for help as needed, right? Very similar to surrounding yourself with people, but asking for help, you know, is going to enable you to have better ownership 
because you're learning. I'm not, you know, if you take ownership of something, same thing, you know, if I take ownership of this mug, what I put into it, all that, I'm accountable for it. But I can ask someone, you know, okay, should I be having water in this? Should I be having tea, coffee, milk? What about some alcohol? And get some help as needed to help direct me when taking ownership of how I'm going to, yeah, consume liquids. <laughs> it's just the analogy I'm using because it's right in front of me. So I hope that gives you some some insight. Now, the next point that we're going to be talking about is removing the blame. And what we'll cover first is why blaming isn't the answer. And it's simple because it doesn't solve anything, right? If you blame someone else for when something has happened, you know, look, even if it was their, if it was their fault, right? We're trying to be talking about us taking ownership and being accountable and responsible for our own things. But sometimes circumstance happen when it is out of our control. And let's say someone hits you when you're driving through an intersection and it's their fault. You were doing everything right. Shifting the blame onto them isn't going to solve or get to get you to where you need to be. It's going to shift the focus away from the actual issue, which may be like, okay, we need to exchange details and we need to, you know, get the insurance handling this, la da 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 You can put the blame on them, start saying you did this, you did that, or they'll put the blame on you. That's great. It doesn't solve anything. It's not going to get you further to where you need to be. You need to make sure people are okay. You need to make sure everyone's safe and sound and no one's injured and then start to do the due diligence of, you know, sharing numbers, sharing information um, so that you guys can progress to what a normal process would follow. Again, if we start blaming, it gives us a short-term feel of feeling good because like, I, I didn't do this, that's his fault. It shifts the blame. But really, if it, whether it was your fault or not, it doesn't actually solve anything. All it does is make you feel good. It's just a, it's just a short-term feel good, but there's still going to be that long-term pain. Now, when we do blame people, it actually hurts and damages relationships. When we shift the blame, when we don't have a conversation, when we just, you know, radically just say, oh, yeah, it was his fault, he did it, he was in charge of it, and throw them under the bus, it's not going to help anyone, as I said before, but it does damage and hurt relationships. So keep that in mind before you just randomly start saying, oh, yeah, that was his fault, and throw people under the bus. The other reason why blaming isn't the answer is it hinders your ability to actually grow. The reason why is because you will never learn. You will never actually get a chance to experience something. Now, there's times when things will happen. We want to blame others. Once we accept it, we're able to learn, we're able to get over the hump, and we're able to now move on. And the next time something happens like this, we can raise our hand and say, yep, that was me, and you know how to handle it. You can work through it and you can get over it. A lot of the time before we can be really successful, we need to make a lot of mistakes, um, failures or whatever you want to call them. Every time you go through it, it's like when you fall over, you get up a little quicker. When you fall over the next time, you know how to dodge it. So maybe you only trip and you you catch yourself in the fall. You get a little bit better each time. So that's why not shifting the blame is actually going to work in your favor because you're going to be able to move forward and you're going to be able to basically reap the rewards of that iterative learning as quickly as possible. Two other things of why blaming isn't the answer is it creates a negative mindset and we don't want to go there. It's toxic. And the other one is it actually limits your accountability because if we're talking about taking ownership, that means responsibility and it also means accountability. And when we shift that, it means you're, you're free of that. You got nothing to do with it, but the reality is you probably did. And that actually, again, it solves, it doesn't solve some of the bigger underlying issues of dealing with your own crap, but also, you know, solving the, the problem at hand or finding a solution to the problem at hand. So essentially, if we if we sum it up, it it's not the answer because it doesn't lead to a positive outcome. It doesn't lead to personal growth and it can actually hinder our ability to, I guess, progress and to create um, a better outcome. And it just leads to those negative outcomes. So instead, it's important for us to focus on taking the responsibility and finding the solution to the problem and getting that resolved. The fluff aside, you know, sometimes that might mean we have to swallow our pride, but that that's going to be the sure win from going through that process. So by taking responsibility, we actually enhance our self-awareness and our growth ability. And that's, that's a win-win, right? That is a win-win. So the question that you may be thinking is, okay, Chris, but how can we actually go about doing this? How can we make this a little bit easier? And there's three areas that I believe make sense here. It's focusing on the solutions, being honest, but also seeking help. A lot of common themes here. And the first one being focusing on the solution. So I've already kind of touched on that, you know, why we need to solve for the solution, but we need to ask ourselves, what is the real cause of this problem, right? If we start chucking the blame on people, again, it doesn't solve it. So if two people have hit each other in a car accident, 
there's a reason why. Yes, someone might have been on their phone. Maybe there was oil on the road. Maybe there was bad weather conditions. Um, maybe, you know, there was an issue with your indicator and you didn't know. Or maybe there's, there's so many different things. But there is a real cause of the problem. Taking each person's perspective away, meaning, you know, shifting the blame to each other, start to understand what's actually happened and what, what has caused this. It might have meant someone just wasn't paying attention, right? And yes, it's at their fault, but we don't need to go rub it in their faces. So if you can find a common ground, um, if it is between more than, you know, just yourself, then that that's going to enable you to get ahead. That's going to help you to focus on getting that solution as quick as possible. A key thing that you can do, though, is reframe the negativity and look for the positive swings, right? Again, if, yes, it might have been someone's fault, it's like, it's okay, we're okay, no one's injured, you know, let's look at this as a positive outcome. You want to, you know, de-escalate the situation. I'm obviously referring to more of a car accident, but you do, you want to de-escalate it and say, okay, let's take that aside, it doesn't actually make any difference to it. This is the problem we now need to solve for because the, the mistake or the error or the fault has already occurred. We can't change that. The only thing you can change is how we're going to fix it, how we're going to amend it, how we're going to manage it, how we're going to find a solution. The next one is being honest. Now, taking ownership means owning up to your mistakes. So being honest, being transparent, and being willing to have the conversation. But I think where we forget here is actually learning to listen and hear other people out. You know, we can talk, we can say all these different things and say, yes, I was wrong, I'm, here I am, I'm being open. But also getting that feedback, getting that back and forth conversation from someone else, especially if other people are involved in it. And if we make our own mistake and we're the only person that it's impacted, well, the only person you can listen to is yourself. Have a sook and then get over it, right? But you do need to bring in and listen from other people. But if you do make a mistake and other people are giving you insight, other people are giving you feedback, it's worth listening to. Third point is seeking help. Now, there's nothing wrong with asking for help, especially uh, when you are doing it alone. And you need to understand you are not alone, right? So asking help and for support is a key way that is going to enable you to make this a little bit easier when, when removing or avoiding the whole blame game situation. And sometimes that might mean you need to seek some counseling or find a, a safe place to be able to, you know, just let yourself be free and get out of it. And that's okay, right? Some You could even read some self-help books or, you know, just to gain some fresh perspective. But to be honest, you know, you can't be in a situation and then just expect that you can just walk away and say you need time to figure it all out. Um, you do need to give some level of context of what needs to happen, right? And it might mean you need to step back and just have a think and clear your head before you can go ahead and start to resolve and get into solution mode. But make sure you, you be transparent about it, as I just said before. And it might mean, okay, we need more help on this. How am I going to solve for this? I need help and find someone that can help you solve it. So in short, if I re quickly reflect on removing the blame is... It requires you to focus on solutions, it requires you to be honest, and it requires you to seek help. It seems simple, but by using these different tips or I guess, you know, ways of working, I guess we can shift our focus away from the blaming or, you know, getting confused or getting worked up and actually start working towards taking responsibility for the actions that, that have occurred and actually finding a positive outcome or solution in getting it rectified. Now, the third point that I wanted to bring into this whole conversation was showing up and making it happen. Now, once we have figured out what we are responsible for, meaning what are we taking ownership for? And once we know how to manage the blame game and to put that aside, we want to continue to show up and we want to continue to have that iterative um, approach of rinse and repeat and getting things done and actually growing and learning and yeah, making mistakes, but getting back on our feet and moving as quickly as possible. So that's what we're talking about now. And my answer to this is, as I just said before, iteration is the answer. And it's important to understand why persistence and consistency is crucial for success. You see, once we have learned from something that we've done, we can leverage it. We can build momentum from it. We can snowball it. We can use it to build our skills. We can use it to get better knowledge. And then we can make better decisions down the line if that was to occur again. And by continuing to show up, we can replicate this model as quickly as possible and we can increase, I guess, our accountability because now we're able to say, okay, now I'm going to do this because I know how to handle it. I know how to control it. You can take bigger responsibility. You can take bigger ownership of it. So we can create good habits. We can now learn how to overcome and work through setbacks. It makes it a little bit easier. So when we put in the reps, of learning, it increases our motivation and our resilience. And that's really what we're trying to achieve here. The other thing is, as we continue to show up, is it builds a sense of accomplishment 
And we get to own that. We get to take that home. We get to be a little proud about it and say, yep, I, I did this. I did this. But we also have to be responsible for when things take a dip and when things aren't working in our favor. So, you know, we will naturally learn better problem solving skills. We will naturally learn how to handle future challenges, but how to be resilient, you know, and know what to do when things get tough. It also reinforces why learning through repetition is king because it has that snowball effect. It enables us to get the ball rolling, get momentum and see things happen. So the big question again is how do we make this easier? How do we make showing up and being consistent easier? Well, it's a lot of the same stuff, guys. It's a lot of the same stuff. It's setting realistic goals. It's creating a routine. It's leveraging the tech, the apps, the systems, or the people around us. It's having someone to support you and it's celebrating the wins whether it's small or big, and you need to have that in the plan. But most of all, it's also about having fun. Once you have those things, you can now execute and you can take action and you can go do the work. You got to do the work, but all those things is going to enable you to do the work that little bit easier. So let's quickly recap the whole episode. What have we been talking about? If we sum it up, we've been talking about taking ownership means taking responsibility for your actions, your decisions, and your outcomes. Removing the blame means focusing on solutions rather than blaming others and avoiding self-criticism and continuing to show up and to make, um, you know, make things happen. It actually involves a couple of things. It involves being persistent it involves being consistent. And we have to do this within the realms of learning, growth and progress. So my call to action for you is this. Embrace these principles in your own life. See how you can apply them. But most of all, start taking ownership of your situation. Wherever you are right now, whatever it is that you're doing, see what you can do to take better ownership. Focus on the solutions rather than blaming others, right? So if you're dealing with a situation at the moment, remove the blame. Assume that it never happened. Focus on what is the thing that we now need to fix. And then you can work on committing to being consistent and persistent with the action. How do I now move forward? How do I now take this and make sure it never happens again and get back to the momentum, right? And this is how you will make a real difference in your life. And you will achieve your goals. You need to maybe set some goals, but you will achieve your goals if you've got goals set by applying all these principles and you will live a more fulfilling and rewarding life. It's that simple. So go out there and make it happen. Now, before we wrap up, I do want to say, let's uh, let's continue the conversation. If you do want to continue the conversation, if you've got something that you want to say about this, a question or a statement, or um, it could be an opinion, an insight, or maybe you just want to share something, um, you know, all in between of what I've just mentioned, by all means, please then jump over to speakpipe.com slash further your lifestyle. And you can drop a little voicemail there and um, you can leave a message and I'll look to include it in one of the upcoming episodes. We can continue the conversation. All right, team, really do appreciate you being here once again. And if you enjoy these episodes, please go ahead and share them with someone else. If you think there's something here that resonates with you and that could resonate with someone else, it would mean the absolute world to me if you could share that with someone else and send it to them and say why it would actually be a good episode for them to listen to. Otherwise, hit the like, hit the subscribe button, follow the podcast, leave a review if you want, or you can leave a comment or you can jump over and drop a message over on SpeakPipe. Appreciate you being here. It's always an honor. You have a wonderful day. Cheers. Cheers.